Welcome to another video from Voyager Steam Lab. This one is another 3D printing video. We are using SolidWorks today. This is our first project that we do in SolidWorks. We use loft and shell to make a vase. This is a student design. Um, when we loft something, we use a bunch of flat sketches and loft will connect them into a surface and knit them into a surface. Um, and then we can shell it out so that it's hollow and we can 3D print it as a vase. This is the first project I do with students uh, when we are learning how to 3D print. So we're going to do this project. We're going to use this outline right here. It's pretty simple. There's only four steps, but each step can be a little bit tricky. We're going to make planes so that we have multiple planes to put our sketches on. Then we're going to sketch cross sections on each of those planes using the sketch tools. Then we're going to loft everything all together to connect it and shell it out to make it hollow. Um, there's a couple of tips in here that you're going to need to write down and make sure that you have right about the correct thicknesses and things like that. We're not super worried about scale right now, um, but if you make it really big or really small, you're going to have some trouble. So we're going to go to File and choose a new part. And when you have a new part in SolidWorks, there's just nothing there. But if I hover, you can see that there are actual planes. If I click on the plane, it will select them. I can pick a plane. I'm going to choose the top plane. And I'm going to set that plane to show by clicking on the eyeball. And that will make it so that as I move around, I can at least see that plane. Okay. So now what we need to do is we need a bunch of flat planes because that's what Loft does. Loft connects flat sketches. And so we're going to loft these together. So we need to make a bunch of planes. They need to be parallel to the top plane. I can't use the right plane or the front plane because they're at different angles. I want them all to be parallel to the top plane. So I'm going to select top plane. And in the features menu, the features menu is where we get all the 3D stuff. The sketch menu is where we get all the flat things, flat sketches. And then we're also going to use in this class analysis preparation once we have some objects to combine them and split them and have them interact with each other. So under the features menu, I have reference geometry. And right, right here, I can choose plane. Um, there's also a way to do 3D sketch planes as a sketch. But um, I'm not sure. this. I, don't, I haven't figured out what the difference is or how this is actually very helpful. I prefer reference geometry for what we're doing today. We're going to choose plane. I'm going to make some new planes. So because I had top plane selected, it's going to use that as my first reference, which means that the plane that I'm making is parallel to that plane. You can see they're very close together. Um, I should have checked this before I started this tool, but if I'm not in millimeters right now, that's what I need to be in for our 3D printer. Um, and that can really mess things up if you're trying to model in inches. So if you made that mistake like I, I did, um, you can exit this reference geometry and you can just change to millimeters, grams, seconds as your units right there. Um, if you're already in millimeters, you can just continue on and you're going to want to change this distance. It goes in 10 millimeter increments, which might be good in some cases. Sometimes you actually want to type in a distance. And I have made two planes. When we're lofting, we need at least three planes to make a vase that looks interesting. So I can make multiple planes that are all the same distance apart like this. So I'm going to make four new planes. So I'll have five planes total that are all parallel. And if I hit check mark, you can see that they show up here and that they are shown by default. So now let's check my outline and see how I did. So I made the planes. So now I need to sketch cross section. So a cross section is if you have an object, like you have um, your vase, you can imagine that vase cut into slices. And when that slice cuts through, what shape will that be? That's your cross section. So these are flat shapes. I can select the plane I want. I'm selecting the bottom most plane, which is called top plane. That's a little confusing. And I go to the sketch tab. And I can use either straight lines or arcs or splines, or I can use a pre-made pre -made shape. So like I want to just start with a circle on the bottom. And you can see because I had that plane selected, it did this thing where it shows me the normal view, which is fine for what I'm doing right now. I just drew a circle. I clicked in the center. I drew a circle. When you're making a sketch, when you are done with that sketch, you have to exit the sketch. I can tell I haven't exited the sketch yet because I still have these two icons right here, the exit sketch and the cancel sketch uh, icons. I also have the exit sketch icon up here that is darkened. When I exit the sketch, you'll see that my plane resized. Now I've got sketch one. It exists as a part of the top plane. And that's the first sketch that I did. 
what's really important when you're sketching is you have to be aware when you start a sketch what you have selected. So if I have nothing selected, like right now, and I start my next sketch, and this time I'm going to use the polygon, it'll give me this warning that says I don't know where you want to sketch. I can select an existing sketch to add to it. I can select a plane, and that plane will let me draw right on it. Now I'm drawing at an angle, so I have to be a little bit careful because I'm not seeing what it looks like straight on. You can always change your view by clicking on the View Orientation Cube and clicking on one of these sides to see it from that angle. You can also click on the View Orientation Cube and then choose one of these presets here. If you choose Normal to, it'll take whatever you have selected and look straight down on it. I also like this one because it gives me that nice angled view so I can see where everything is in relation. To change your angle, you can middle click. Just click the mouse wheel down like this to rotate around to make sure that we're all on separate planes. The reason those are really important is if I made a mistake, like for example, I'm about to intentionally make a mistake. I'm going to draw an ellipse, but you'll, what you'll notice is I'm going to draw it on this plane right here, plane 2. I'm going to draw my ellipse so that it's above the hexagon, except for it's not because I didn't close that sketch, so it just looks like it's above the hexagon. See how it's actually only looked like that from that force perspective. I didn't close the sketch I was on, so it's still right there. So I can now, I, I want to get rid of that ellipse, I can select it and press delete on the keyboard, and it'll go away. Exit my sketch. If I'm just always exiting my sketch, making sure the next thing is selected before I start drawing, I can draw my different shapes pretty easily and I can check it and make sure that they're all where they want to be, exit sketch. If I don't select, I can select, um, I can select by clicking on the plane here. I can also go back to the features list, and if I know I want to be on plane 3, I can select plane 3, and that way my sketch will be in plane 3. Okay, so I need to make a sketch in each one. So now, um, it, I can also move things pretty easily. So like if I if I put this there and then I want to move it, I can just click on it like this and it'll move it. I can click on this little arc there. I can move it like that. Let's see. Can I rotate easily? I don't does not look like I can rotate easily. So I'm still learning a little bit about SolidWorks, but you can see if I wanted to line these up, I could be more careful and make sure that they're more lined up. Last sketch, select that top plane. Um, this one I'm going to free draw, so I'm going to use the spline tool. Now, I don't really want to draw like this. It makes it really hard to see, so I'm going to choose normal to here, so I look straight down on it. And then on this top one, the spline tool, the way the spline tool works is it's really easy to draw things. You can just sort of click wherever you want the curve to go through. So you can draw things pretty easily. If you want a sharp point, you can stop your spline by pressing um, escape on the keyboard. So I'm going to draw a unique shape. This is not one that I can just pull off of here. So now I've got all of these things, and now I'm going to loft them together, because that's where we're at. We have all my cross sections I can loft them together. But I'm going to show you a couple of little quick things first. These are really close together. It, if my loft fails, it might be because I tried to make too strong a transition in between things. I can change these things pretty easily by selecting the plane that they're on and just dragging them. Give myself a little bit more space. If your loft fails, this is a, a good thing to try first. Don't try and make too big a changes in too small a space. Okay, I'm separating these ones even though they're very similar. I'm going to show you why right here. So loft is a features. If you go into features, you can choose loft. When I'm choosing my profiles, where I click on the profile matters. So if I click on this edge and then I click on this edge, it's going to try and twist from this location to that location in the transition. So if I don't want to twist, if I want to go straight up, I'm just going to select sort of straight up. So you can see these green dots that shows you the orientation here. So then if I click here on, on purpose, I'm going to twist from one square to the next. So instead of just continuing my square tube, it gives it a twist. If you have too extreme a twist, it will not work out well for you. So for example, what just happened? Everything disappeared. It's because it's having a hard time. If I close this, it'll probably throw a rebuild error. Not always, but sometimes. If I do a little less twist on that top part, because I had they were pretty close together, I can still get it to work. Check mark will lock it in. I have some options here that I'm not going to worry about. I'm just going to hit check mark, and I've got my shape. If I deselect, you can see that the sketches are now inside this loft. So if I want to edit the sketch, I can, but I can go in here and choose edit sketch, and I can come in here and decide that if I want to adjust the the circles I can change like 
the diameter of a circle. That's something you can change about a circle. I can move it around. I can do those things. And when I close my sketch, it will rebuild. Okay. So now these planes are kind of in my way. I don't even want to see them anymore. I'm just going to hide them just so I can focus on what I'm doing. I don't have to do this. I just did. Okay. So now this is an interesting shape. To make it a vase and not just an interesting shape, I have to do the next step, which is shell. Shell is a 3D feature, so it's in the 3D features tab. Here is shell. If I choose shell with nothing selected, it's going to ask this. And if I hold, hover over it, it says faces to remove. So if I click on this top part, it's going to remove that face. Now, shell doesn't automatically give a preview because shell is a pretty um, computer intensive uh, operation. So if I want to see the preview, I have to click show preview. And it will show me that surface it's going to create. If that surface doesn't show up, or if you don't like how it looks, you might want to adjust the thickness. On my 3D printer, if you make it less than one millimeter, it's probably going to be too thin to actually hold together. So one millimeter is about the minimum on my 3D printer. But you can see that looks really thin for this. That might be because my vase is really large. So you might also want to think about it proportionally, because I might need to shrink this on my 3D printer to make it fit. So it's just a preview. If it won't preview, if you when you hit this, you hit a rebuild error, try shelling outward. Sometimes it can't create an inner surface, but it can go out that much to create the surface. I'm going to click the check mark, and now I have a vase. This is 3D printable. Most vases made this way will be 3D printable, even if you don't know much about 3D printing or overhangs. So that's why we use it as our first project. Plus, they can look really cool like this. So I'm hoping that you enjoyed making a vase with me. I'm hoping that you understand how to loft and shell. Go ahead and try this out and see if you can make something that's easily 3D printable, that's a unique shape that you have designed.